Hello, good day. This is Dr. Ligardo Arpalaca Jr. and welcome to my channel. For today's episode, I will be talking about one of the most common, if not the common, methods of research. I am talking about survey research. So what is survey research? I know survey is the most common, but le let me give my piece. So research, survey research is a process of conducting research using a survey that are sent to the survey respondents, then statistically analyzed for data information for a meaningful, for drawing of a meaningful research conclusions. And that is survey research. So what are the basic reasons to conduct a survey? Okay, so survey research is conducted for market research. Companies conducted survey research to know the feeling of people or the opinion of people with regards to a new product or a new services. Survey research is also another way or the best way to get the opinion of people, feedback of people with regards to the implementation of a gov government service or of a government program. So generally, survey is the feeling of people. So before you would consider survey as your method of gathering information, you have to ask questions, basic questions like, what is really the primary aim or reasons for conducting the study? And you have to know the answer and you must answer that question. Second is, how do you plan to utilize the data? So let's go now to the, the, the things that must be considered before conducting a survey research. First that you have to consider is you have to understand the respondent's behavior to get the solution of your queries. I would give you a specific example. Because of uh, COVID-19, there is this uh, renewal of the old system of the exchange of goods and services among people in Bohol. We call it the barter system. So if you would like to research about the bar barter system and you, t you want to know the opinion of people with regard to the barter system, you have to inform your respondents like what is really the basic motivation or the intention of the research, why you want to know people's opinion about the barter system and how it could help the people. Okay, So how could they be impacted with your research? And you should be honest. Second, Research, survey research, presents a medium for discussion. Yes, it is an opportunity for people to express their opinions with regards to a certain topic. So, uh, opinion can either be a criticism or an applause with regards to an organization or to a system or even products or services. So, the best way to get the opinion of people is to use an open-ended question and that would be tackled later third survey research is a strategy for a never-ending quest for improvements survey research would result to the gathering of information with regards to criticism and feedback of people it could also be a mean to improve the possible uh, services or standards of behavior among government offices or among government programs. Then, uh, why it improves services? Primarily because in survey research, we're talking here of numbers or statistics. Like, uh, if the result would say 70% 70 per 70 of the people are not in favor of the proposed implementation of a new program, then it could provide a statistic to the government or to any concerned agency that the people have negative perception with regards to the program. 
So let's go now to the process of implementing survey research. So there are different processes. First, you have to decide on the survey questions. What are the things to be included in your survey? Is your question close-ended or is it open-ended? So we're talking here of nominal data or ordinal data. It can also be about interval or or ratio and proportion but that is another uh, episode okay so you have to decide on the survey questions so before you decide on the survey questions you can do actual research on how to construct and even refine your your survey questions so you have to research more okay second you have to finalize your target audience why it is necessary because different group of respondents have different culture they have different understanding towards towards things so you have to adjust your survey questions like the words to be used that can be most appropriate to a certain group of people so if your respondents are very old so do not use questions or words that are intended also only for the youngs okay okay so you have finalized your target audience or your population so what is next so you have to decide on how to reach out your audience or your population. So uh, what is common is the face-to-face. -face. But because of the limitation or the prohibition provided by our government, face-to-face -face survey is not appropriate this time. So what you will do is you consider other mediums. Can you utilize email? Or it can be embedded in the website? or you can use social media. So you, ha you have to go back to your target audience and ask this question. Are my target audience have the, the capacity or the way to answer my questions using social media, using email, or looking into my web or checking my websites? Those are very important components because the success of your survey research depend, depends so much on the capacity of your respondents to answer your survey questions so you have to consider it so there today there are uh, three ways that are prescribed by department of education with regards to data gathering so first is online or the use of email second is the use of cell phone or your telephone and if you can do face to face it should be limited within your household only so let's go now to the common types of survey questions. Obviously, the most common is multiple choice. So there are choices, usually three to four. So I'll give you an example. Going back to our given example, the barter system. So you would ask this question. How would you rate your experience in the barter system? Four would be very satisfied. Three would be satisfied. Two would be not satisfied. Four would be not very satisfied. Okay? So that is an example of a multiple type of survey question. Second is rating scale. Rating scale. So in your survey, um, there is this horizontal line. Starts with zero and ends with ten. So you would tell your respondents, given the situation about COVID-19, how it affects your psychological domain. A zero for the lowest, not experienced, 10 for B. I am very much affected. So you, the, the respondents would simply put a line or X on the part that she or he feel is impacted. Like I would select four. Okay, so that is an example of a rating scale. So let's go now to the four types of survey question. And that is the Likert scale or others would say Likert scale. So Likert scale is simply the, the scaling of people or respondents' opinion or response. It can be stated in the positive or negative way. I would give you an example. COVID-19 affects my family economically. So your choices would be 4. Very much agree. 3. Agree. 2nd. Disagree. And 1st. Very much disagree. So it is an example of a liquid scale. 
And there are many ways of Likert scale to be, to be done, but it's just one of the examples. So next is the open-ended questions. So open-ended question is a type of survey research wherein the respondents are given free will with regards to their answer. Like example, what strategy is the best way to counteract the fraudulent transaction in the pages of Bohol barter system? So with that question, the respondents would simply write their answer. And it's now the role or the job of the um, researcher to consolidate the answer of, like for instance, 100 respondents. So let's go now to the sixth one, which is the demographic questions, demography. So demographic questions simply looks into the, uh, the, the data or the factual information about the respondents, like age, gender, occupation, or religion. So let's go now to the types of survey questions. Previously, we talked about common types of survey questions. Now, let's go to types of questions. So first is the ranking system. So from the name itself, rank, the respondents would simply put a number of the five choices. Like for instance, what are or what what are the products that you preferred when buying soap in the market? So is it Palmolive, um, uh, Silka, Safeguard, and for instance, I would simply, if my choice is Safeguard, so I would put one on Safeguard, as simple as that. The other one is image question. So what is your feeling, example, what is your feeling when you are exposed to this situation. So uh, the respondents would check sad, happy, anxious, angry. Okay? So image question. Third one is file upload question. So that is in the, the, the modern technology, some questionnaire would say uh, what ask information and you just simply upload uh, your answer in the website. But be, be careful because Many websites are actually predatory. Now, like for instance, phishing. Now, phishing is uh, a fraudulent type of uh, getting information from respondents, but actually it would be used uh, for that would would be used against a respondent. The last tip that I would like to share to you is personal tips on how to write a very good, if not excellent, survey questions. So, number one. And I hope you would remember these tips because these are from my personal experience. First, pattern your questions from experts. I'm not stating or I'm not saying copy, but pattern. Because copying and you know taking into consideration the way the questions were stated are different. Again, so you just simply pattern how questions were crafted from the experts of your field. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Second is... Ask mobile-friendly mobile questions. Because of the prohibition of the face-to-face -face gathering of information, so students are limited with the use of mobile or the use of websites or internet in asking questions. So you have to write or you have to pattern your questions in such a way that it is mobile-friendly. mobile, mobile friendly. Like if your questionnaire would be open using different cell phones or different computers, the format would just be the same. Okay? Third, which is the most important, open your questions for criticism. Op again, open your questions for criticism. You are a student researcher. You are not yet an expert. So if you have a mindset of not open to correction, my dear, that is really a big problem. So what I am stating here is you ask help from your professor or from your research teachers or anybody that is expert with regards to crafting your question. Certainly, if you're open to suggestions and recommendations, you would be able to present or design a very good, if not excellent, research questions. So that's all for today's episode. And before I would end, if you want to have an easier time with regards to research, please subscribe to my channel.